The fourth and final step of the Roux method is called last six edges, and that's exactly what it is, it's solving the last six edges. And the first sub-step, I guess you can call it of that, is edge orientation. And what that means is flipping all the edges so that they're facing white or yellow up. Um, there are already a lot of good resources like Waffo's tutorials, and I'll link them in the s description. But in this video, I'm just going to summarize uh, what's in the videos and his, his page, and also a few more ad advanced tips like influencing the next steps. So in total, there are 10 edge orientation cases, ignoring AUF and symmetry. Uh, so and all of every single one of them comes down to getting this. What this is called is the arrow. There's three bad edges on top because they're not white or yellow, and one on bottom. And to solve it, you uh, point the arrow at the bad edge, you turn the middle, the top, and then the middle, and that solves it. So basically any EO case, we'll just do something random here. Any EO case, you just all you have to do is get the arrow and then solve it. So that's what every single case is going to come down to. Uh, the only problem is that I see beginners doing, getting the arrow really inefficiently, like spamming MU until they get it. So just like, there, there's that. Uh, but on Waffo's page, there are the fastest ways to get the arrow from every edge orientation case. Like from this one, there's two on top, two on bottom. You can just do M2 and there's the arrow. You may have noticed during solving that there's a bunch of different ways to solve the same case. Like for this one, when there's two on bottom and two adjacent on top, you can do M2 to get the arrow. You can do U prime M2 to get the arrow. You can do U2 M2 to get the arrow. Or you can do U M2. And you might be wondering which of those is the best. Um, it'll all depend on what angle you get the case from. So if you get it from here, you'll probably just do M2. Uh, but it also depends on the left and right edges. So once you get a little, little more advanced at this, uh, what you want to start doing is influencing the next step, which is solving the left and right edges. So that would be this green one and this blue one. Uh, for this, you can't really influence them that much, I think. Uh, so the, influencing the left and right edges also comes down to just a few cases. Uh, like this one right here, when you have one of the edges on the top and one on the bottom, you can do bring the the bad edge towards the arrow, so that would be this one towards this. And then you see now this is at the bottom and the back, so instead of doing UM prime, you can do from here, you can ma match this blue up in the back like this, so they're opposite from each other, and do U prime to pair them up like that, and then M prime, and now they're like this on the bottom. So that's one of the cases, and the other one is like this, I guess, yeah. Uh, so when you have them both in the top layer, one of them is on the side of the arrow, and one of them is on the back of the arrow. So this is the front of the arrow, this is the back. And when you have something like this, uh, you want to put the one that's on the back of the arrow to the bottom layer with M prime like that, and then put the one that's on the side, it could be here or here, on top of it, and then either put it down with an M prime, or you can put it to the top, because in this case... Uh, you can just bring it straight down, and then that'll be solved. Uh, I'll link uh, Ross's video on how to do that in the description. Uh, it's very in-depth, way more in-depth than this video. Um, yeah. So edge orientation recognition is one of the few pauses in the Roux method, but this can easily be avoided by predicting the edge orientation you're going to get uh, while you're doing CMLL. So this one right here, it's a uh, T case and it's solved with left sexy and then sledgehammer. And I know that the alg flips these two edges. So here there's two. And if these two flip, this will be good and this will be bad. So there'll still be two good edges, uh, two bad ed edges on top. So I know what the case is going to be. And then I don't have to pause when I start EO like that. So you want to, uh, like take, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half or something, go through all your CMLLs and look at how they affect edge orientation, which edges they flip, and even if you want to get really advanced, uh, which edges they swap, so how they affect permutation. Uh, so for this one, I I didn't know this, but it's like it does a U-perm over here. Uh, so that would help with tracking edges around and knowing not only the number of flipped edges, but their positions. I'll show an example of predicting edge orientation during CMLL and then influencing left and right edges. 
So here, the algorithm I use for this anti soon case is L prime U2, L U2, and then sledgehammer with, on the left. And I know that flips this edge and this edge, so there's still going to be one bad edge on top. And since this is orange, I know this has to be either white or yellow. So this one has to be bad because there's all, always an even number of flipped edges. So then I'll do the alg and I know I'll still have one bad edge on the top layer. And it ended up here. So what I can do to get the arrow in this case is M prime, U prime, M prime. And I know that's really good because I don't have to adjust the top at all. And also M prime puts this green edge here and this blue side edge here. And then that would uh, enable me to solve them both at the same time like this. So now there's the case where this is in the back of the arrow and this is in the side. So then I just line it up to the bad edge in the back right there and do M U prime to stack them on top M and yeah, that's it.